today is a great uh, meeting to uh, discuss all these issues about um, tenure and governance as well as uh, uh, investment because, of course, these are all linked. What we've learned over time is that one of the biggest constraints in the forest sector, constraints to conservation, constraints to uh, poverty alleviation, and constraints to um, getting rid of uh, corruption, and et cetera, is the fact that tenure, that is the ownership of the land in the forest, is contested in most parts of the world. So the, that means that in most developing countries, you still have a situation left over from the colonial period when states, governments, claim ownership over, let's say right now it's about 75% of all the forest. And that's despite the fact that in almost all of these forests, indigenous people and local communities live. So the fact that that ownership over land and forest is still contested between these local people and the government undermines our ability to bring solutions and sustainable investment and, uh, and undermines our ability to reach scale. So uh, RRI, the Rights and Resources Initiative, is a coalition started about 10 years ago. Um, it's a coalition of now 14 organizations that are collaborating with each other to focus on this issue of tenure reform in forest areas. And, and the coalition includes some research organizations like C4, ECRAF, and a few others. It includes some human rights organizations like the Forest Peoples Program. It includes the indigenous peoples organizations like Teb Teba from the Philippines, as, as well as conservation organizations, forest trends, etc. So it's a diverse mix of organizations that all have an interest uh, in securing property rights. Now we're now in our 10th year, it's kind of amazing. Um, it had a lot of impacts, helped uh, and move the needle in uh, China and in Indonesia, Brazil, a number of countries. We've helped on advancing tenure reforms, and legislation, and securing community rights. So it's all good. But nobody's happy yet because we've not gone far enough and there's still so much more to do. So in the several years ago when we conducted an internal evaluation of RRI, we identified that, look, we've got to start uh, going beyond just the coalition. We've got to start engaging the private sector. We have to be more, much more creative about uh, uh, developing new instruments and new approaches to attract uh, and incentivize private actors to become positive players. We also have to uh, kind of re find new ways to reach out and engage governments. And so there, there's two new instruments that we've created just over the last uh, few years, and those, that's what we talked about uh, today. And we presented products from those new instruments today. One is um, what we call the Tenure Facility. It's actually a new instrument. It's a new fund that finances uh, securing community rights at scale. What, it, what that means is it, it's a source of funding for communities to map their land, register their land, and get that officially recognized. And we created that because there was a gap in the world. There's not funding, there's not a, enough funding actually out there now to, to meet the demand from communities or from governments. Um, the World Bank is not providing enough funding, the bilaterals, so there's a big gap. And of course, uh, all uh, actors now understand that the securing property rights in forest areas is essential, whether you're a private company, uh, whether you're a community, whether you're government, clarifying these property rights is, is essential. So we've created this tenure facility and we've just signed our first two um, investments, in uh, one in Indonesia with uh, Aman, the National Federation of Indigenous People, and the other is in Panama, and so Kunapip, the National Federation of Indigenous People. And in both those cases, they'll use this money to actually map and secure uh, property rights. And in doing so, uh, develop protocols and examples with government, so how to scale up. This is new guidance about how private companies should acquire land. How should they um, uh, either rent land or purchase land or uh, how uh, in developing countries and in, in rural areas and kind of where there's forest and, and um, kind of other co common lands. So we developed this tool with uh, what's called the Interlochen Group. It's another instrument that we've created. Um, the Interlochen Group is a group of private company, leading private companies that have already committed kind of to do the right thing, uh, stop land grabbing, et cetera, and leading NGOs. We brought them together in a, in a safe space. We use the Chatham House rule. There's about 15 people around the room. 
and they've developed the principles about how private actors should um, can both expand and leverage their incentive to secure community right, land rights. You know, what should they be doing? What should they not be doing? And what should they be doing uh, to secure community land rights? So that the, both the, the interlocking group is very interesting. That was just the first product. Uh, they have a number of other products in the pipeline. And that's uh, Nestle, Unilever, Olam, uh, Rio Tinto has been involved in that group from the private side. Um, and on the NGO side, a Global Witness, a Forest People's Program, um, Oxfam have been involved, and a few other NGOs. So that that group is unique because it's um, individuals from leading institutions and uh, able to move very quickly on reaching agreement. And since we've adopted Chatham House rule, they get very technical, very sincere discussions.